cues. But that's not exactly uh, the type of EQ I'm talking about today. So last week I talked about, or I think it was last week, I talked about um, uh, the tone stack calculator and like amp EQs and that sort of thing. I had some questions that I wanted to answer real quick. So let's do it. All right, so hopefully you can hear me over this loud PC's fan. I don't know why this stupid PC is so loud, but it is what it is. So anyways, uh, back again on the tone stack calculator right here. Right here. Uh, let's see, we got Vox again, and let's go back. So just to kind of refresher. There's our Marshall EQ. That's a, That would be the EQ... Um, EQ curve given like a certain impedance, let's call it a flat signal. So, I mean, it's not really ever going to be a flat signal in a tube amp. But anyways, it's just kind of a reference, right? So it doesn't mean that that does not mean that that's the EQ of a Marshall. So if I was, you know, not totally clear the first time, there's other things involved. So there's EQ on each stage. There's the power stage. There's the speaker. There's the cabinet. There's the transformer. There's all kinds of stuff, right? But that's just kind of a general idea, okay? Um, and then that's the Fender, okay? So uh, this would be a passive tone stack. Um, and I would describe it to, like, to a non electrical type of person, um, you know, like a guitar player who's not really wanting to learn about math, you know, so, um, which is cool because I'm that guy as well. Uh, like you, you take the bass down, you see how it drops all that bass with everything up on full, that's your curve. So with everything all the way up, you're dropping down about like at your at your lowest point. Let's see, it looks about about five dB or so. You're going to lose off of the, the high end. You're going to lose a bunch of middle, 22, 22 dB, 25 dB somewhere in there, and uh, you're going to lose some bass about eight, eight dB or so. Um, in the middle, of course. Uh, I'll show you this. So back to the middle. Scooping it out does that. Raising it does that. That's back to the middle. Your highs all the way down. See how it takes like basically everything above, I don't know, what is that? 800 hertz or so and just starts shelving it. It starts taking it out. Um, so that's your highs. Now, but th this interacts too. So let's say I bring the treble all the way down. And that's what my mids are doing. So my mids actually decrease my highs even more. And even with the mids all the way up, it's not, it's uh, still not flat, but it's still bringing some treble up too. And then um, let's look at the bass and see what that does. So all the way down, mids in the middle, highs all the way down. You're flat-ish, uh, but you're missing about 30 dB right there. So you ask for what the flat setting would be. Technically speaking, if you're just looking at the tone stack and not anything else, that's your flat point. Bass and treble all the way down, mids halfway up. Um, like I said, though, you have a lot of good things going on with the with the gain stages themselves. So even though I say it is flat, it's really not flat, but that's the flattest point you're going to get if you're trying to truly get flat. And you probably really don't want flat. It's kind of it's kind of lifeless sounding. So, okay, uh, let's uh, let's do the opposite. Let's roll everything all the way up. Uh, let's keep the bass in the middle. Okay, so I have the mids up. I have the highs up. Let's see what happens to that treble. Okay, so it still shelves some of it. What's the mids do? Mids do that. So it drops down just a bit. Comes back up. Bass drops way down. Or can go way up. We'll raise the mids back up. So you can kind of see everything kind of interacts a bit. Okay. And sometimes that's cool. Sometimes that's not cool. Uh, now to answer a specific question, someone said, I wanted to see the, the back sand all. So here's the back sand all. And uh, we're roughly centered. I'm a little off right there. So, but we're close. Oh, that's right, there's no mids. <laughs> uh, okay, so bass raises all the way up, takes a bunch out, and once again in the middle, we're minus about 20 dB. 
highs are going to do that. So they're going to drop it down. And by the way, that's your mid range. That right there, that's 1K. So this area is your mid range. Uh, so highs out there, highs back in, all the way up. So you can kind of see like if you have the base and treble all the way up, you get a good scoop. If you have the base and treble down, you actually get a mid-range bump. Uh, and it's not that you're getting a mid-range bump, it's, just, it's that it's taking a bunch of bass out, a bunch of highs out, which leaves some mids. So that is the basic back sandal, or James as they call it on here. So yeah, kind of fairly, kind of the same thing for all intents and purposes. And then of course, um, you know, with this software, I'm not gonna go through a bunch of it, but you can change different stuff to get a different, you know, reaction. So that's 330 PF right there. So what happens when we increase that substantially? Okay, so now it's way different. So when we're at neutral half, we got a bump in the mids, or I'm sorry, a bump in the base, because that right there is 100 hertz. So that's bumping the base. So that kind of answers those two questions. And now for the next one, which is the difference between passive and active, I'm going to switch to my Apple Macintosh, iMac to be exact. And uh, we'll look at a fancy little uh, plugin. Okay, so while this is a plugin, it's going to allow me to really um, give you an idea of what's going on. Since you saw the EQ curve on the tone stack calculator, this is the kind of same thing. So right here is our mid range. I don't know if you can see my, yeah, you can see my cursor right there. That's our mid range points, um, lower mid range and lows, really low lows, higher highs, etc. Uh, so there's different ways to do active. Active would be in a nutshell, active would be like, um, you're taking specific frequencies within a range and boosting them up or cutting them down rather than taking all the frequencies and cutting everything down a bit and then allowing the knobs to bring those frequencies back in. Okay, that, that would be passive. Active is you're actually taking the frequencies and cutting them or boosting them. Um, basically, I mean, there's more things going on, but that's what you're kind of doing to the ear, okay? As far as your ear knows. Okay, so um, I have, there's something called a Q, okay? And it's easier to demonstrate it. It's kind of like the width of frequencies. Okay, so if you see this, if you see this curve here, what it's showing is that it's, you know, here um, a couple dB up, looks like about three dB up, it's pretty wide. As you raise the volume, as you raise that volume of that, um, frequency, it gets more and more narrow, okay? Um, and we can change that, like let's say we want a wide Q. So a real wide Q. So that's even bigger. Now, the problem with too wide of a Q is it can actually sound like it takes a bunch of volume out. So you really have to uh, make sure the, the width of the Q, or the, the Q of the EQ is, is um, exactly where you want it. So a really narrow band would be like this. So that's that's pretty narrow. That's going to sound real spiky, almost like a wah, uh, like a wah pedal when you raise a frequency, when you toe down. Um, and you can also, with the active EQ, you can uh, have a couple different uh, stages all at once. So let's say we want one knob to control both of these. We can do that. Now you can see uh, these are two different cues here. You take this back to one, so it's the same as the other one. So if I had one knob that controlled both 100 hertz or so and 290 hertz or so, let's let's scoot that in a little closer. I would never do that, or not unless that was my intention. So you can kind of see there's kind of a little dip here in between. Um, not always what you want, but sometimes that can be cool. It, it really depends on what you're trying to design for. So let's raise that to 0.5. Or is that a 0.5? And this is this is all stuff that we would do in oops, we would do in analog, but it's very easy to kind of give you an idea of how it's working to the eye. Okay, so as you can see, look at this blue area here. It's really uh, kind of taking both those frequencies and making it wider without too wide. So that's kind of a cool trick. Um, 
and you can do other things. So you can have several different points that you have controlled all by one slider. Okay, so let's go back to one. Let me show you what happens when you dip it. Kind of the same thing. So the Q is one. We can make that a little tighter. I'm sorry, wider, I should say. So, kind of gives you an idea of, of uh, if you're controlling two different frequencies with one knob or one slider or however you want to control it in analog. Um, kind of gives you an idea of what's happening there. So, back up to halfway is uh, going to be neutral. So, won't notice much of a change in tone at all that way. Okay, so I hope that actually helped you. Hope to answer some questions that you had. I noticed some in the comments, and I also had some emails where people were just asking me some questions that apparently I didn't explain very well or at all. So, hope it helped you. If you have any comments or questions, as always, please leave them below. Or, uh, you know, don't. Hopefully you do, though. And uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.